sweet. Hi. Hi, baby. Um, where'd Candy go? So come here for a second. I want to give you a hug. Thank you. Please thank these people. Thank all of these people and all the volunteers here. Thanks. Thanks. Another. You want to talk into my mouth? Here. No, that's exactly what I didn't want. Come here, baby. Here, uh, just get a little closer. I Come thought here. that's the part of the presentation already, so. All yours. No, but seriously, it's awesome. Like, the first time I came out here uh, with all the hash days cats, man, how cool it was to like go to a security conference out here and learn actual information versus like in the States where they show us how to use script. Um, it's really, really neat. Uh, and I've met really cool people here. So I just want to thank them because without them, we couldn't have cool stuff like this. Um, I thank United Airlines usually, even though they fucked me over quite a bit. Uh, they still get me from place to place. I, I, I like thanking you guys, because it keeps it entertaining. And all the people that are like, tell me something fun. Don't just show funny pictures. Well, come on. Everybody else teaches you cool things. I had to at least do some, you know, PowerPoint, because PowerPoint's super fun. Uh, I give disclaimers in my talk, because apparently if you say the wrong things, um, people write you up in magazines, and then they bitch at you, and then they start foundations to like fight against the tyrannical evil that you are because you're on stage because you made like a, a dick joke or whatever. So I'm gonna make those jokes, for sure. Like this shit is gonna happen. So if you want to be pissed at me for the racist, weird, anything that I say, I don't, I don't care, at all. I totally don't care. So this is the point where like, you scroll through the whole EULA and you just hit accept or you fucking leave. Cool? So all of you agree to be here and not sue me when I'm being really terrible and foul. Uh, party hard last night. Super fun at the speaker's party. Uh, everything was very you know, cool. I'm going to try not to puke while I'm on stage. It's good get all fired up, get excited about talking, right? Because it's like, the beginning of this helps me think about it and like get into it, right? Start swearing. Um, my, one of my favorite graphics I've ever seen. Oh, dude, there's graphics all over this presentation. I have no idea why I would put them in this presentation. But I was like, man, that's so cool. I have to show it to people. Um, so yeah, two cunts in a piss factory, TCP. How cool is that? Yeah, every time somebody says TCP connection, that's what I think of, because I'm like 10 on the inside. Uh, anyway, that's me. I'm Chris. I'm an American. Um, this is how we see the rest of the world. <laughs> I love that shit. Love it. Uh, I have a bunch of certs. I have one of these. I have one of those. If uh, you don't even need Photoshop because Wim is here, <laughs> you could just have him sign like a fucking bar napkin, and I'm pretty sure you get a CISSP. <laughs> uh, I have a bunch of other certs. Uh, I really, really, really enjoy my job so much that I make graphs about it enjoying my job. Uh, I work at a company called Lares. We do code review. Uh, we do some incident response work. It's really fun. Uh, we also do risk assessments. <laughs> Man, that's so fun. Uh, we do physical security stuff. We do pen testing. If anybody's never seen this picture before, it's really funny. It's also kind of sad because it's really true. <laughs> uh, we do red teaming. We do all sorts of other random crap. Yeah, yeah, love me, that's me. If you want to ask me anything about my history, you can. I'll probably lie. Uh, so what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about the information security restroom that we live in, right? <laughs> God, that 
I don't even know why that exists, but that's out in like Virginia somewhere, I think. Anyway, so we have the shittiest investment industry ever, right? Like we are the absolute worst industry you could ever invest in. I mean, not, not to make money off of dumb people because we're one of the best at that, <laughs> right? Like we're like, oh, AP, advanced, fuck, what do we call it? Let's call it advanced, okay. And then we'll call it, no. If we, okay, if we say that they're persistent, they'll have to buy that shit every year, right? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, so that's in it. And then people spend advanced persistent risk. No, there isn't enough money being spent on risk management right now. Uh, threat, threat intelligence, threat, threat management, APT. Yeah, there we go. We'll call it APT because it means it's advanced, so they'll have no idea how to fix it. That's up to us. Persistent because you got to pay that shit every single year, and threat because no one wants to be threatened. Money in the fucking bank, right? We lose money every year, but the amount that we spend on InfoSec every year goes up. What? So wait a second. So you mean to tell me that what I get is if if you give me more money? The only thing that I could guarantee is that you will definitely lose more money this year. <laughs> and we're the ones bitching to our management like, yo, I don't have enough money. <laughs> really? Like if we were stockbrokers, all of us would be fucking fired. So that confuses me. <laughs> like I'm really confused about what like, our industry even means sometimes. What the fuck is this picture? I was looking for pictures for the talk, and Rob and I were sitting in the little room up there, and I was like, dude, what is this picture? And we were all so confused that I was like, yep, this shows that I'm confused. <laughs> all right, so we fail at this stuff, right? Like, we're not, we're not good at success. We're really good at failure. Like, that's why I have stuff called pen testing, right? It's, like, built around proving failure. Like, we have an industry that's really interested in failure. So when I think about that, I'm like, why? Because I've been in this industry for a long time. I'm one of the problems. I know that. Right? And I've been trying to figure out how the hell do I fix it or do something to actually make it make sense. Um, so the first thing I did, like we do everyone else, I blame someone else, the vendors. So I blame all the vendors first. Uh, because they're like, you know, money on their mind. They're trying to get paid and go back to the suburbs where they don't have to talk about anything. Um, and then I started looking at, you know, okay, well, we use really ancient technology, right? Like web app firewalls in the 90s or, you know, self-defending worms that we figured out how to work in the, you know, 70s. And, you know, buffer overflows are still around unless you listen to Box talk and he teach you how to fix it. But... All of this shit is so old. Cloud computing? Like, what a shitty repackaged poop. Like, it's just a poop that's in, like, a real neat box. And they're like, wait, you've never seen this before. You look at it, and you're like, no, it looks like poop. And they're like, mm-mm, it's candy. And you're like, it's candy. And they're like, yeah, look at the sprinkles. They're like, look, it's candy. I've never seen that shit before. Give me that. It's just so dumb. Like, it uh, frustrates me. So. As I get frustrated, there's a good time to go over stats, and the only reason I go over these is so that you can tell somebody else, because I'm sure you already know most of this stuff. But one of the things that I thought was interesting in the DBIR recently is that 80% of the intrusions that were actually intrusions um, were linked to phishing. Like, that's pretty bad. It's pretty bad because we spend a whole lot of our time talking about everything else, and we obviously haven't fixed that shit. So we like, should probably work on that. You know, these directed attacks, the, you know, the fact that malware infection is going up, but we're spending more money on antivirus. I mean, we have regulations that are like, you have to have antivirus. But like every piece of proof that we have, if we start to apply science to InfoSec, proves that if you have antivirus, you are more likely to get a virus. <laughs> That's weird. Wait a second, so if I use a condom, I'm more likely to get pregnant? Hmm, I think I have a new excuse. Um, so 
This one's hilarious, and this is just so that I could use my slide of a dog picking up poop. 79% uh, of respondents in a Poneman study, which their studies are shit anyway, but it's funny to look at and read their words. 79% of respondents selected end users as the number one group responsible for the security of cloud service providers. What? Like, what does that even mean? So the end users are supposed to protect the cloud service providers, right? That is a dog picking up its own shit. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I had to use that because I know this is one of Dave's favorite slides. It is. And it's funny. And it's true. So, all right, so we, we got our stats are all screwed. So I start, you know, I look at attacks and I think of, well, how can I make better changes in what I do based on the shit that's going on out there? And we look at, like, Data Loss DB, which have you guys gone to Data Loss DB before? Right? It's awesome. They do kick ass work for free that you can reference all the time of what's going on actually in attacks. And you look at this and you figure out that when we add all this crap together to boil it down, hacking is 28%. Web attacks, right? You know, all the web people are like, web's the next hot shit. Like, everybody fucks up web apps. Fix your web apps because it's broken. Yet, 9% of the attacks that really happen happen through web app hacking. I would say our eye's not necessarily on the ball there. I mean, it's reality, right? Reality means that, you know, back to my condom, if my condom only works 9% of the time, it probably wouldn't be the first thing that I went to to protect myself, you know? If my girlfriend was 28% cute, I might think about taking a look at what else is there. So there's 63%. So I figured that my career so far has been wasted 63% of the time because I was doing all these pen tests and all these web app tests and code review. And in reality, I missed 63% of the shit that I was supposed to be teaching people by doing my job. I suck. I get that. So what do we do? Um, one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard is that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And I apply that to myself and I apply that to our industry and it makes me think maybe we're just not working very hard. Maybe. Maybe we're just kind of like clicking the button and hoping we get paid so that we could go drink somewhere. Maybe we expect the users to do more, they don't do it, so we say, fuck it, I can't teach them, because they're idiots. Maybe that's the reason there's 80% phishing, because everybody's dumb, right? But I think that it's more a little bit about us not working hard enough to communicate what we need to to make this shit actually go forward. You know. When I, when I do those things and, and I look at anything that's been successful in, in my career of doing consulting, because I've been a consultant for all of my professional career for the most part, except for my you know, seven years at Sprint and whatever the fuck I was doing at KPMG. <laughs> fuck that place. If you work there, pfft, sucks. You should get drunk more and quit. <laughs> oh, I thought it was going to go over. So I digress. Um, people need proof, right? I mean, a lot of times you just have to prove it in order for people to really connect. So when you, you look at security programs and you see the stuff that we've tested before and how we test and where we test, you can break it down pretty much into physical stuff, social stuff, and electronic stuff. Right, stuff, it's an advanced term, I know. I'm American, I can't figure the rest of it out. Um, so we look at physical. We do kind of half-ass job on physical, right? We go through and we're like, yeah, you have cameras, right? Because we're doing our little audit. And they're like, see, so do you have a centralized system to look at those cameras? Like, we know what the fuck we're talking about. And uh, they're like, yeah, we have it here in the control room. And there's some, like, 400-pound dude who couldn't run to save his fucking life in a room watching 50 cameras and Oprah. <laughs> and that motherfucker is only watching Oprah. And there's, like, all sorts of shit going on. And the cameras are off and on and whatever else. And we're like, well, it looks like you've got a pretty advanced operations center. Check. Do you review the tapes? Yes. Check. 
<laughs> Do you have full camera coverage? Yep, look at the outside. Yeah, it looks like the outside. Check. All right, like, that does nothing. That, like, the shit that we're auditing isn't even what the cameras were intended to do. They were intended to catch someone in the act of doing something shady and give you a view into that so that the human looking at it could get some type of interpretation to understand if we needed to respond or not. Yet that response ability is not tested in any of those assessments. All you're doing is saying, is the tool on? Yes. That's like, are you a good race car driver? And they're like, here's my race car. And they're like, looks like a race car. He's a good driver. It's nothing to do with it, right? So we also have some misconceptions that allow that. Like, you know, no one's just going to walk into my building. Really? Pfft. Let me try it, right? So they, you know, we, they disconnect a little bit. They think it's a little too James Bondy. You know, you have social stuff. I mean, for the most part, the way that our industry has gone and tried to test social things is by doing phishing. Phishing is some antisocial shit. You're sitting in a room sending people email. That's, there's nothing social about that. Social is the interaction between people. Yeah, I sent them an email. It's like UDP. I mean, it really doesn't help much. Granted, you can test a couple things if you're doing phishing properly, but most of the time we suck at phishing so bad that we can't even figure that out more or less call them on the phone, interact with them in person, figure out if there's intelligence leakage, do all of our OSINT profiling properly so we can see if people are just doxing us because they don't give a fuck, right? Or if they're just putting their passwords out there. Or how many people on the tech help desk have used the, you know, what the bleeping computer or whatever and published your entire registry out to that thing with keys and your passwords and everything else? You know, and, and then we try and test electronic. And our industry's been trying to do this stuff for a while. And the reason I make it a little bit more green in that one, because graphs are totally arbitrary. You make them say whatever you want. But I feel like we've done a little bit better in electronic, right? We're, we're working at the app level. We're working at the operating system level. We're starting to teach people more to review their code and build things securely. And that's really important stuff. But the way that we scope, that we test, we end up cutting off our own feet. Well, I only want you to test between 7 o'clock at night and 4 in the morning. OK? So you want me when I am in my shittiest performance ability. That's what you want. You want the test when I'm fucking tired and I'm, all I'm thinking about is going to sleep. Like, that's the level of commitment you want from me. They don't even think about that shit. They're like, nope, just want it in non-production hours. Have fun testing. <laughs> but we want you to only do it externally. Yeah, because there's no one on the inside that attacks people. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, maybe we could actually use some of this prick Snowden bullshit to tell people like, hey, attackers are on the inside. They're there. They're, they're there. It happens. And they'll be like, nah, bad guys are on the outside only. Um, you know, we only allow directed attacks. No, you can't fish our users. Why? Because it would offend them. Oh, apparently that's things that hackers care about, is your user's feelings. <laughs> and it really confuses me sometimes. And I, I think, and I don't think this is their fault. I think that a lot of this stuff, we need to learn how to teach them that this shit is important without me just making fun of them, because we could do that all day, because it's silly. But I think we need to do a little bit better at trying to teach them instead of just like gaming the system. Because you know you can get a genie and you can just say, hey, I want more wishes, and they're like, no, and then you're like, then I want more genies, and they're like, fuck. <laughs> you, know, you win, <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? Because we're hackers, this is what we do for a living, <laughs> right? I am absolutely not concerned what it does. I am only concerned with what it can do. That's it. I, I don't, it's a, it's a marker, not to me. It does something else. What does it do? I don't know, I sniff it and get stoned. You know, and they're like, well, and they're like, yeah, it's my portable get high device. 
They're like, no, Chris, it's a marker. And I'm like, whatever, I'm three, I'm ripped. Don't care. You know, like, don't want to color with this. Way more fun this way. All right, so I'm sure most of you have heard me say that Mike Tyson is my InfoSec prophet, right? That man said the most profound InfoSec knowledge ever, which was everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> Every single person has a plan until they get punched directly into their face. Then they have no fucking plan at all. They may have planned and like read their little Aikido book and they're like, I'm fucking Steven Seagal, bitch. I'll be like, psh, 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 bam, and you'll just be dead. But as soon as you punch them in the face and they're laying on the ground crying, trying to fix their glasses and shit, and you're kicking them in the fucking head and stomach, like, their whole plan sucks. And the only thing that they could think about is how to make the amount of pain that is so serious stop. They don't give a fuck about plans. And then there's somebody like, you know, some like InfoSec guy in the corner like, use the plan. <laughs> and the person gets their ass beat and they're like, that dude's a punk, motherfucker can't even follow a plan. Like, okay, then you come here, get punched in the face and see if you can read your book. Read a book while somebody's fighting you. It's super hard. <laughs> I tried it as a demo and the person beat the fuck out of me. It was not cool. So the rant of all of this to me is that in order to educate people on what we do and how we need to fix things, the thing that I have found most successful in my career out of all the different types of testing that we've done is the type of testing that makes it real for them. Some people, all they need to make it real is a threat, right? Some people, all they need to do to turn off their computer is be like, I'm gonna hack you, and they're like, fuck that, boop. But they really don't change anything because they turn their computer on the next day and they go right back into the same dumb situation that they were in, right? So we gotta figure out those ways to make it real for them, and it's not gonna be the same for everybody else, but I've looked at a bunch of these attack patterns and how people do stuff, and. You know, he coined this red team term and co-opted it from military shit years and years and years ago. Because whatever, it's, you know, we gotta make up terms and that sounds cool. I'm on the red side. I don't even know what that means. I mean, now I'll probably get screwed for it because we'll be like, you're Chinese? And I'll be like, no. Oh. But when you're looking at stuff as an actual attacker, you wanna find the weakest point, right? I mean, that's what, that's what we do. because. It's fun, and that's the lazy way, right? Is always look for the weakest shit so I can just get in, own them, and be done. Um, but if you look at anything in physics, anything in the world, in the material world, the weakest point is always when two things join together. The part in which those things join together inherently is the weakest part of that entire design, right? Chemistry, physics, all of those things. So when, when I'm looking at attacks and attacks that are, that are pertinent to people and I want to find some of those easier attacks that also make it real for them, I try and combine those areas. So when I combine those areas and those areas converge, right, we start to see some of the areas that we can test that may not be the same way that we were testing before. I have found some of these effective. So you do a pen test on somebody and you want to start converging these areas, go for the badge system. I mean, you can, make bad, you can make badges at your house. You don't even have to do super cool spy shit. You could just own the badge system after you get in on a pen test and print a badge, and if you're all nervous about doing SE work or breaking in the building or like you want to feel like James Bond or whatever else, you just walk in that thing and be like beep, and you, you get right inside. And it's so shocking and cool to them. They hate it. It makes them want to die, okay? No other way have I ever seen a user group respond to me with just shit all over their pants, freaking out, not knowing who to blame in like 
total panic and chaos as I am when I go through some of these attacks and we, you know, I'm sitting at my laptop outside in the parking lot, like, hey, uh, Chuck, yeah. So we're outside, could you go over to the door into the data center real quick? And they're like, yeah, sure, I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, Chuck, do you hear that noise, that click? Yeah, can you go ahead and open the door to the data center? And they open the door, and you hear the phone go, because they don't want to talk to you anymore. Um, all of a sudden, the vulnerability that you showed them in the pen test on the outside that was just red and you assume they would fix it because it's red, all of a sudden that becomes real to them. That's something that you brought directly in front of their face. It's something that it's hard for them to ignore. It's hard for them to be like, well, look, XSS really only affects the user that clicked on that link. Okay, fine, but if that user was targeted specifically and they're a sysadmin and I got in through your VPN, then I used that because I could get into the VPN, that dude had credentials, I could find the badge system, I could log on to the badge system and then it opened the door. Now XSS is really fucking important, right? Because without that XSS thing being there, I couldn't have opened the door to the data center. That's a real long stretch. But we have the skills to make those things happen. And when we show people in that manner, holy shit, do they respond. Now, I try not to talk about technical things because everybody's smarter than I am. But just as some tips, just in case, um, as dumb as all these are when they were like considered me dropping O'Day at DerbyCon when I was talking about these, which I still am like shocked. Like, what do you mean a <laughs> default password is O'Day? <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? That's what our industry has devolved to. Uh, I know what the password is. Ooh, I got a vulnerability. That's not a vulnerability, it's just dumb. <laughs> right? But these things you can find really easy. WinDSX is one of the larger units that's controlling badge systems. If you go look for port 555 and 556, right, that's where they run their database. The kind of cool part about how they run their database in WinDSX is there's a web app that runs on 555, and they pass database commands to the web app from the controllers using HTTP post <laughs> into a form that accepts straight up SQL. That's a real thing. What? I like look at that in the test and I'm like, bullshit, select, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I'm like, hey, look at this stuff. You know, and then there's five of us sitting in a room that we're not supposed to be in in the first place. <laughs> and we're like laughing our ass off and somebody comes in because we're like making a shitload of noise. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, dude, check out this. And they come in and they were somebody from IT. Um, and they're like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah, we're doing some consulting stuff. We're working on the badge system. Look at this dumb shit. And they're laughing. They're bringing other people in for IT. And like guys who are sitting at the table laughing are like picking badges off of them and fucking cloning shit, and, like trying to get into their laptops. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, good use of their time. Um, on guard, Linnell. Linnell's one of the top two. Uh, look for these ports. You know, Linnell Multimedia is one of the ones that I find on almost every single Linnell system that's out there because, you know, the smart people are like, oh, got to change the SA password because it was in my hardening doc. Oh, got to change the admin password because that was in my hardening doc. There's nothing in my hardening doc that says shit about Linnell. Fuck that account. Don't care. Probably doesn't do anything except for admin and everything. Um, also cool, yeah. Any of you find a Linnell system, you web app people, please Go to these URLs. I will see talks from you the day after, <laughs> freaking out about the number of web app vulnerabilities that are in this shit. <laughs> freaking out. Like, you'll get accepted at fucking Black Hat, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I, I mean, I'll pay you if you don't get accepted. How about that? Straight up. Paid research if you don't get accepted at Black Hat because you will find mad shit in these. I could find stuff and I'm retarded. <laughs> Seriously, like I'm one step above just clicking next. That's it. And I found shit. 
So when attacking badge systems, remember rape. Replace, add, promote, exploit. Because those are all the things that you need to test in the badge system. That's clever. I wanted to find a reason to use the 40 pound box of rape. Um, because you know you want to open it. <laughs> Love that. All right, so you get into badge systems. Some of the things we need to test when we're converging those surfaces to teach them about how to monitor their badge systems better electronically. Again, bringing physical security and electronic security together, right? We want to be able to replace stuff. So replace a user's picture with one of your engineer's picture who's breaking in. Now, this one was really helpful because the dude's name was Eric Smith, and that dude's name is Eric Smith. <laughs> so I was like, man, we got a free pass. Just show them your license. <laughs> and of course, what happens? Oh, well, you show them your license, and then they give you your badge because you're Eric Smith, the employee. <laughs> now, really, really simply, you could have taught this attacker by monitoring picture changes inside of your badge system. How many people monitor picture changes inside of the badge system? You put your hand up, you're fucking lying. <laughs> you are a lying son of a bitch. Fact. No one does. Okay? All right, so maybe we want to add stuff. This one was fun because I added Chris Gates to it, but I put his legitimate, like, you know, real social security number and everything on it because whatever, I pay him, so I know what his social security number is. So it's funny to troll your engineers too while you're doing it. Um, and then they can go get a badge. But if you have other badges, make sure that you can promote them. You know, take a crappy badge, clone it, get into the badge system, add privileges to it. Right? Because I should be getting alerts. My physical security guys should be alerting my electronic security guys or vice versa that shit is changing in the badge system because shit in badge systems really shouldn't change a whole lot. It's pretty static. Like, you get a new employee, you should be like, oh, it's a new employee, add them to the badge system day. Two new employees came on. You could really easily figure that out. You can script it by going into PeopleSoft or wherever the hell you have all of your ADP or you know, other payment systems, figure out that they're a new employee. Oh, cool, they've been employed within the next couple days. Got it, I can automate every single piece of this to diff out the people that are supposed to have changes, supposed to have privileges added or not be there, yet we do none of it and badge systems are wide open for you guys to just run around and be like, look at me, I'm doing whatever I want. It's crazy, it's wild west. Um, any of you guys, you know, the talk I was watching a minute ago about the Android parsing and, and using some of those things in the PDF parsing, and uh, I was like, wow, I need to talk to a bunch of you cats, and just sort of, point, which I'll do right now with, is it a little laser thing? I'll just point at it. On guard mobile monitoring. Someone please download that application to your phone. Because Linnell, on guard, right, has a mobile app for guards to use to go on guard tour so they don't have to use their badge. Woo. So we were like, that's cool. Download the app, fuck with the app a little bit, walk up to the door, be like, beep. And the person, by the way, always take your point of contact with you when you're going to talk this much shit. Always. Because they love it. Just walk up and be like, can I open that door? I want to see if this works. And they'll be like, uh, yeah, sure. And you pull your phone out of your pocket and just touch the screen and the fucking door opens. <laughs> They're like, thank you, Jesus. You know, I mean, they'll, they'll start like praying to you at night. <laughs> it's weird, but you, the amount of devotion you get from those people is pretty high after that, you know? How do I make it so that some random person I don't know who talks shit and doesn't dress well, doesn't pull their phone out and open up all my stuff? Like, well, let me tell you. You know, you got their attention. You get to do some cool stuff with those people now. Um, this is fun. I don't know if I can make this play. Fuck, why would it play? It's, no one cares. Anyway, I'll just tell you about it. Um, unless it is playing. Yes. See, this is so stupid. I don't even know if it plays. Um, 
so these Kaaba locks, you've seen these a lot around Europe, huh? You guys have a lot of them around here. <laughs> look, watch. Oh, look, the door opened. <laughs> what? What do you mean? It's locked. No, it's not locked. Let me just put this in here. And what does it do? Oh, it grounds it. And then the door opens. Are you fucking serious? That lock costs a thousand euro. Buy, click. Okay. <laughs> you get what I'm talking about, about converging some of these things to make an impact? Give them a show, right? Physical and social, you get to play dress up. You know, I've, I've had, yes, I look like I'm really stoned. It was just tired. <laughs> and I was also really fucking stoned. Um, so this company, uh, Dominion Power, uh, because some of you cats are from Virginia and D.C. area, you know that Dominion Power runs a certain large amount of that area. You can look up what power companies are running what pieces of the power grid very, very easily in every country I've ever been to. Um, on the pentest-standard.org, in the guide, in the intelligence collection and gathering section, there's like a hundred links of how to look up some of this shit. So we look it up, we walk in the data center, well, Eric walks in the data center, we're sitting there hanging out for a second. I'm in the parking lot, because I didn't want to get burned if he was gonna get fucked with. You know, we got one more shot, I could at least make a like crazy mad dash and just go in and like, you know, punch the security guard in the face and just run. Um, you always gotta have a plan B. Uh, so he goes in, he tells the guy, hey, I'm from Dominion Power, we're having some faults in the area, blah, blah, blah. Guy's not buying it at all, right? Like, he's a decently trained security guard. He wants nothing to do with Eric's bullshit. Everything's cool. He's like, well, he's going to hang it up. And he, Eric's really pressing, trying all these different SE techniques, trying to pace him, trying to do all this somatic reading shit, fucking anchoring. All, I mean, he's, he's really giving him the works, right? The guy's not having any of it. Right as he's turning around, he's about to give up. We're going to go, you know, hit another method. Dude runs out of the data center, and he's like, hey, are you from Eaton? And what does Eric say? Yes, of course. I'm from fucking Eaton? Yeah. <laughs> and so he looks at the guard like, idiot, and walks right by the guard, and the and dude grabs him, and he rolls in, he goes in the data center, and he gives him this huge story about how the guy has been listening to this fucking alarm all day long. And he's freaking, you could see in his eyes that he's like losing his shit because the alarm has been going off. And Eric's like, well, let me call my buddy who works on these Liebert systems because it's a Liebert that's making the noise. So he calls me and I like take a run in the parking lot and drive around. He goes outside to have a cigarette with the dude. He's like, let's get the fuck out of here. The noise is killing me. The guy's like, I know, dog, it's been 14 hours. You know, I've been here all fucking day. So they go outside and the guy's bitching to him like, look, I've been calling y'all for like four hours and nobody's come down here and we're, you know, SLA and this and that. Eric's like, look, man, which this works real well in SE. He's like, look, dude, he's like, I, they woke me up. I was with my kids. They woke me up, made me come down here. So if the fucking executive guys have a problem or whatever else, like y'all need to yell at them because I got woken up with my kids. I was in bed with kids, done, Psh, everybody's asleep. I got blown up, had to come out here. Well, all right, well, that sucks. Come up. He's like, oh, you're the, you're the Liebert guy. I'm like, yeah. I don't know shit about Lieberts. Nothing. Like, other than what I was looking at on my phone while I was trying to drive around in the parking lot so I didn't sound like a total retard. And I'm like, looking at their website. I mean, I know what the power management shit is, but I don't know anything about models. So I had to find one model that I, like, could read into a little bit and be like, oh, you guys got a 4980? One of the ones with the fucking oil pressure, this and that? The guy's like, yeah. I'm like, Pfft. Yeah, score. No idea that was going on. Walk in, walk in the data center. First thing you got to do is obviously please the person you're doing any SE with. So he shows me the alarm. I'm like, awesome. He's like, man, how do you turn this thing off? So I look at the box. It's on the wall. About that big. Has a speaker that's making a really horrible fucking noise and a button. So I was like, hmm. Push a button. Hold it. Alarm went off. And he's like, oh shit, how'd you do that? I'm like, well, you just push the button in and then hold it, turns off. He's like, oh my God, thank you. Like he was, he was going crazy. So I've obviously fixed his life. 
Um, now we have to figure out how the fuck we're going to get our implants, our wireless access point, get into a bunch of servers and everything else with this dude all over me. So I'm like, well, let me see the Liebert, see what's going on, look at the error codes, all that stuff. So we go in, again, never use one of these fucking things in my life. I'm just pushing buttons, going through menus. I'm like, yeah, it seems legit. I'm like, oh, look, this is blinking, push that. Shows me a fucking code. I'm like, oh, shit, Eric, write the code down. He goes, writes code down, doesn't even write it. He's just being a prick. He just, he like shows me his notepad. He goes, and there's nothing on it. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. You know, like just to mess with me a little bit and see if he can like make it shittier. So now I'm like, he's like, well, do you know what's going on? And I'm like, yeah, there's high head pressure in the oil valve that uses to lubricate uh, the control mechanism that generates part of the engine management system that then uses it as a reciprocal current for, you know, power stabilization. Damn, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> yeah, the shitty weird part is I was like, kind of right? <laughs> because, well, I mean, I cheated. It said high head pressure. And I was thinking, man, I now know how some of my girlfriends have felt. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm like sitting there and I'm like trying to figure out what to do. So I'm like, well, hold on, man. Let me, I got to go take a piss. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. Like, you fixed my whole life. The alarm's off. I don't care. Leave, go take a piss. And I'm, like, freaking out. High head pressure. I'm, like, trying to remember the code that dickhead didn't fucking write down. And I'm, like, typing all this shit. And I'm, like, scrolling through blogs and forums and all this other stuff. And I finally get to a forum where it actually kind of looks like I can fix it. <laughs> Based on, I mean, if these people are full of shit, I'm going to kill myself. But, like, I had to roll the dice. So I come back in. I have to get underneath the Liebert. Like, I'm sure you guys have seen big Liebert power systems. So now I'm like crawling under the floor. There's oil everywhere. Like oil spraying on me. I'm in my fucking Dominion power shit. I've got my phone out because I'm trying to read this thing and like tell me what to do. I feel like, like the shittiest bomb disarmor person in the world. I'm like, <laughs> you know, oh, cut the red wire. I'm like, but all the wires are green. <laughs> fucking cut the one on the left. So I'm like looking at it. I'm like trying to deal with this shit. It's Eric's like goading me on. Hey, did you find the head valve? He's like kicking me and stuff. I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> and the other guy's like, and we start kind of going at it. And the other guy's like, I'm going to let you all work. He's gone. So I'm like, yeah. So I hear him because I'm under the floor walking away. So I'm like, all right, how do I do anything to appease this? So I, I, I ask Eric for a towel. He's like, we're in a data center. Where am I going to get a towel? I'm like, not my fucking problem. You couldn't even write down the code. Go find a towel. <laughs> so he eventually finds some, like, crap paper and other shit. And he's just, like, throwing it down the hole like I live in a trash can. And, like, stuffing it down and stuff. And it's, like, in my shirt. And so I'm, like, trying to wipe stuff off so I can see what's down there. End up finding where this head pressure valve is. And luckily, it wasn't hot. Again, no idea what I was doing. Probably should have died. Um, so I'm, like, turning this thing because it looked visibly loose. And the fucking alarm goes dead on the lever. Like, it stopped freaking out. And he's like, it looks like it's good. No idea what I did. <laughs> right on. So I get up. I'm like, OK, I'm going to go explain to him what's going on. And you go own every fucking server that you possibly can, and I'll keep him busy. Okay, no problem. He opens up boxes. He's putting in wireless access points, fucking 3G, backdoors, all sorts of bullshit place. And I go in, and I'm like, man, I feel really bad that we didn't get out here and service this in time. Let me help you out. I'm going to call the home office. I'm going to get them to get a specialist out here because we need some parts. So I get on the phone with these people that I've never met or talked to in my entire life and start screaming at them at the top of my lungs. Do you know that I had to have so-and-so call me and wake me up when I was going to bed? I just put my kids to bed. Now I had to come out here because you guys can't service a client. This dude's sitting in the chair going. <laughs> He's like, get that ass. Get him. I slammed the phone down, and they were there in 35 minutes. 35 minutes, I lit these dudes up. Meanwhile, we had to get in the camera system, but the camera system was in the same office of their it, like where they had their little like knock in the data center, which is inside the data center, which I don't know how the fuck you put a knock in the data center, whatever. So it was in there. So now, because I had been, you know, like making this big scene, he was like my homie. 
And so Eric walks in, and he's like, yo, dude, he's like, I got to go over to this other job now, and I got to print this shit out. Is it cool if I use one of these? He's like, fuck yeah, dog. No problem, cool. Kit, 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 kit. Every machine in there was owned. And uh, that's not accurate. It says 48, but that's okay. Um, so we get through all of that stuff. These guys come in, and we were happily able to leave with them getting their data center fixed. And we even signed out to be polite of the data center sign-in sheet. And when we showed people video of that entire exercise, oh, including like, you know, gates running around in the basement, because I was like, find maps of this place. I want to go get into other shit. He's like, he sends me this picture. He's like, hey, found some maps. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, we have to get into some other stuff. He's like, hey, here's the diagram of where all the physical security, by the way, attack the physical security people. They hate it. But they also have things like keys. What? Keys? I thought we only had to root shit. Hell no. Get that key box. It's the shittiest lock that they have in their entire enterprise, holding all of the fucking keys to their entire enterprise. If you can't go get the keys to get in, make them want to leave. Hack the HVAC system and turn the heat up a lot. People will just go outside. People will open doors because their office is hot. Because their office is hot. What do you do? Open the window or door. Great. What do I do? Crawl in the window or door. Super easy. Why was that window open? Oh, because I compromised your HVAC system. You should fix that. Right? I mean, you can fake being a police officer, or you can just make up your own fake organization that's fucking nothing, and then it's not illegal. Because it's illegal to impersonate a police officer, but it's not illegal to be part of the Computer Crime Cyber Investigative Unit of the 5th Division of the World Military. You don't need it. All right. Real quick, when you add some of these things together, right, and you start looking at social and physical, you can start reading people's email and finding how to get into the physical things through social constructs. So do that. Bring it the other way. I saw this in the email. I know the authorization process that I have to get into to get into this building because I live in this, you know, I have an office in this big New York building where we have the fancy $10 an hour security guards on the bottom. Whatever, just own those people, figure out what the process is, send the email down to the front desk, they will walk you in happily, right? Because they find you, you don't need to find them. I'm gonna go through, because I have no time, right? When you find boxes, use what you have on the environment, you don't need to install a script. Windows is really, really good at finding shit, so if you need to find a certain person's machine, because you need to figure out how to get access to another area, physically, electronically, use some of the tools that you have, right? Be able to go query LDAP on the fly. Know these commands, because by the time you get in and you need to find someone's box to get your next piece of information, you don't have time to go through your end map of 75,000 hosts. You won't have time. Figure out how to find the host right now, where it is, do a trace to it, figure out what floor it's on based on their naming convention, go to their office, steal all their shit, and leave. Trust me. So when you want to find it, make sure you find the users, figure out who's on the shares. And go converge these things together. So I know I have, what, a minute and a half? <laughs> Not all is lost. The only thing that I can possibly leave you with after all these dumb stories, I mean, don't even get me started on the number of times I've been shot or fallen out of a ceiling or broke my nose or had somebody break my nose, that sucked. Although I put a picture of my face in the final report just to give it to him. I was like, your security guard was effective at physically stopping one attacker. And there's fucking blood all over my face. <laughs> hey, I went to the hospital. I'm done for the day. Um, the only reason I tell these stories and try and communicate it this way instead of giving you a script is that I have found through the execution and some of the things that we've done in my company and companies and people that I've worked with in the industry over the years is that people really, really, really do get what we're talking about. They really get it, man. Like they really, truly get it if we tell them the story correctly. And if you learn how to tell the story the right way, you will be shocked at the amount of stuff people fix. 
So my challenge to everybody in here is to learn how to be a better storyteller, is to learn how to take the awesome technical shit that you do and make it approachable from the absolutely every ring of the population. You know, if your report could go to your mother and she could read it and know what to do next, you're doing a good job. If your report can go to your grandmother and your grandmother gets pissed about how insecure people are and how things need to really be fixed, if she like goes from like, you know, like, well, oh, fuck computers, you know, like to like really involved in it, like you're doing a really good job telling the story. But please, don't point your finger at the users. It's like having a child who's your child, three years old, barely standing. And you're like tripping them and point at them and be like, punk motherfucker can't even talk. <laughs> you know, like we got to get real with these people. We got to know that it's on us to bring them up. They're not going to come up on their own. And so the better stories we tell, the less time that we're going to have to drink our sorrows away and be pissed and give presentations about why people suck. <laughs> Thank you.